The man who played a pivotal role in negotiations leading up to this historic moment remains a controversial figure in the eyes of many. But he maintains, quote, these hands have no blood. The question that we're asking some of our former presidents is, um, when someone says the essence of democracy is, how would you complete that sentence? The essence of democracy is much more than just that every five years there's an election and that all people above 18 can vote. So democracy is about a system in which the government serves the people mm -hmm. and in which the people have rights but also obligations. Mm -hmm. Interesting that you mentioned this, that it's not just about it's not just about the vote. And that's what some people have been arguing that post nineteen ninety four it would almost seem that the majority, the only thing that they feel that they've attained is freedom as well as the ability to cast their vote or choose whichever political party um, they have faith in. But not so much when it comes to um, creating equality, whether it is um, equality of, 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 of the economy, for instance, in participating in the economy. What's your take on that? Our, one of our biggest failures in the past 25 years have been not to achieve greater equality. We've become one of the most unequal societies in the world. And our constitution is focused inter alia on achieving equality and of course also non-racialism, which is the other issue which worries me very much. But we need to create a more equal society. Where, where do you think the, the ball was dropped with regards to this, with regards to level, leveling the, the playing field? I think the starting point in addressing inequality is education, coupled with economic policies which will result in economic growth, the creation of job opportunities, uh, and with those two things in its right place, we will be successful in bringing greater equality to all people. Interesting that, that, that you mentioned this issue around bringing other groups within into the economy as well, because as in one interview, for instance, you argue that even if we, when you look at um, in black communities themselves, you see that um, there is a widening gap between the rich and the poor. This is now within the black community, and this is something that the ANC also acknowledged in one of their discussion documents heading up to their, to, to their, to their policy conference. How do you fix that? How do you fix it to ensure that the gap doesn't widen that much, that you close the gap even within black communities themselves? Governments of the past 25 years needs to get credit, also the provincial governments, also municipalities, for great strides which have been made with regard to housing, with regard to electricity provision, with regard to better water provision, some very good things have happened in that regard, improving the quality of life of, of many people. But there are too many areas still not serviced properly. And I think there should be great emphasis on infrastructure development. But in the end, our unemployment figure is unacceptably high. It must be brought down. And that you can only do through coupling education and training, better education and training, with, on the other hand, economic growth which create jobs. Someone else may argue that one of the reasons that you find that black people can't enter the economy is because white people are blocking them out from entering the economy. What, what, what's your take on this? I don't think that's true in the present day South Africa. I think many white people can't get jobs because they're white. I think we've unfortunately fallen into a new form of race classification. And almost in all companies, and definitely in the civil service, black people get preference. There is a new form of discrimination against white because they're white. And in that sense of the word, I think that's a, 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 an incorrect analysis to say white people are blocking black people. But then how do you explain um, statistics saying that there are more white people in the higher echelons 
of, of, of managerial positions compared to their black counterparts. And you also then bring in the question around um, the income that they get. Some um, that you find that more white people earn way more than their black counterparts, even if they're doing the same job. I think that uh, that, is, that can be explained historically, uh, that a greater percentage of white people have university degrees, have postgraduate experience, etc., etc. So it's an issue of, of an historical situation which is being changed day by day in South Africa. But they can't find the jobs, that's the thing. It is because of the economic stagnation in South Africa that people can't find jobs. I have a son who is 54 years old, who sold his business and he struggled for almost a year to find a job. Why is it? Because there aren't jobs available and because he's a 54-year-old white man. After the break, the TRC Commission, which was headquartered at this building here in Cape Town, which now accommodates students, has left many wounds unhealed. Even those who are accused of crimes against humanity are crying foul. My hands are clean and my conscience is clear. 